All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here tonight and attending. Uh, we are here at the SACAC or the Southern Association for College Admissions Counseling. Thank you all again so much for being here. We have some amazing institutions here to tell you a little bit about themselves and why you should apply to their institution. Uh, my name is Sabelle Rasim. I am your facilitator for tonight. So I'm just going to go through a quick few things with you just to make sure that we make this the most enjoyable and efficient process possible tonight and we all enjoy learning about these institutions. First and foremost, uh, you may wanna ask some questions and that's awesome, but just to understand that that chat function down at the bottom is disabled for you. So the only way that you can ask questions is to go ahead and use the Q&A button down at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You'll go ahead and see that the symbol is on your screen currently right now to show you what it looks like. Go ahead and type your questions that you may have to presenters at any point in time in that Q&A function. Again, you cannot use the chat function, you will use the Q&A function to ask questions. Please make sure when you're asking questions to address the university it is for. So for example, today we have Christian Brothers University coming up first. If you have a question for them, please make sure you say for Christian Brothers University before asking the question, okay? Also, uh, this is a webinar format, so your camera and microphone are turned off. The panelists cannot uh, see or hear you. So understand that again, another way that we'll be able to communicate with you is that Q&A function. Also, we do have a bunch of other sessions going on tonight. So um, this is one of many college presentations that are offered. So go ahead and sign up for a session for the next time slot if you can. And also a recording will be available. So about a week after this uh, presentation or this virtual college fair, you will have an opportunity to check out the recording if you missed anything. Also tonight, we are sponsored by Cambridge Assessment International Education. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you all for being here. So once again, we are going to get started. Uh, first up, we have Christian Brothers University. And uh, up next, we have Randolph Macon College. Hello, everyone. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Hold on. Sorry, I hope this doesn't count for my time. OK. All right, y'all, welcome. Good evening. My name is Maria Dopico. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at Christian Brothers University. We are a small private LaSalle institution in the heart of Midtown Memphis, Tennessee. And although we are a small institution, we are very diverse. Our students come from almost 30 countries. 48% of our students identify as belonging to a minority group. Now that's not just racial minorities. We've got students from all different socioeconomic statuses, all different religious groups. Um, you'll see that 22% of our students identify as belonging to the Catholic faith. Um, although we are a Catholic institution, we do not require anyone to um, prescribe to any type of religious identity. Uh, although we do have the resources on campus for our Catholic students. Our student faculty ratio is 11 to one and on a typical year pre COVID our average class size is 16 and there are a lot of advantages to that which I'm sure a lot of the institutions tonight will share with you all. Um, we've got over 65 different areas of study that are spread out among four different academic schools and those are the Roosevelt School of Arts, the School of Business, the Godowski School of Engineering and the School of Sciences. Now, I think the most important question for students looking at colleges these days is, am I gonna get a job? And at CVU, the answer is yes. When you cross the stage at graduation, we want you to cross the stage with a diploma in one hand and a job offer in the other hand. You'll see that 95% of our students are employed or within, or employed, excuse me, or accepted to a job within six months of graduation. And that stays pretty consistent across all four academic schools. So for those students that are wondering, what the heck am I gonna do with a visual arts degree? I can't get a job with an arts degree. Our, our students have no problem getting jobs in School of Arts. Now we know that success does not happen in a vacuum. So there are a variety of different support services for our students on campus that are included with the cost of tuition, like the Writing Center, the Language Center, the Math Center, the Career Services Center on campus works with our students in getting internships, co-op opportunities, full-time jobs before and after graduation. And of course, we do have the Disability Services Office that works with our students that need any type of accommodations. We have a lot to offer on our small campus. We have over 60 clubs and organizations, and we really, really value networking experience. So of course, we have a lot of honor societies and professional organizations for students to join. But we have a lot of fun things to do on campus too. 
We have a variety of advocacy groups that you can join, um, groups like the Sustainability Coalition, the Food Recovery Network, the Multicultural Club, different religious groups, or you can start your own. So if you get to our institution freshman year and you really wanna start an underwater basket weaving club and we don't have one, you can start one yourself and we make the process pretty simple. Here we have our um, scholarships for academic merit. Now, of course, I'm not gonna go through all of them because we're short on time, but I do encourage you to take a screenshot of this. 100% of our undergraduate um, students that are accepted to CVU are awarded some type of merit aid and it can range from $9,000 a year up to $18,000 a year, depending on if you choose to submit ACT scores or SAT scores. So we are test optional. Now to apply, you can apply through the Common Application or through our website. Our application is always free. We do not charge students that are interested in attending Christian Brothers University. The next step would be to submit your documents, meaning transcripts, or ACT or SAT scores. Now, like I said, we are test optional for fall of 2021, unless you are trying to declare a major within the School of Engineering or the School of Sciences. So you will need a certain math score uh, to declare a major in those areas. And we can talk more about that later if you send me an email about it. And the last step would be to send us your FAFSA. Uh, that is for any type of federal or state aid, but we do not require the FAFSA for students to get a merit scholarship. And that's all I have for you all. If you have any questions about what scholarships we have or what academic majors, clubs on campus, anything like that, you can send us an email at admissions at cbu.edu. But I'm looking forward to talking with you all and meeting you some more. Thank you so much, Maria. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions for Maria at Christian Brothers University, please make sure you put it down in the Q&A. Next up, we have Randolph Macon College. Hi, everyone. My name is Faith Fox. I'm an admissions counselor at Randolph Macon College, and I'm also a graduate of the college. So I'm really excited to tell you guys more about Randolph Macon. Um, we're located in Ashland, Virginia, which is just above Richmond, the capital of Virginia. We are founded in 1830 and have just over 1600 students. So we are a smaller liberal arts college, which means a lot of our numbers are gonna look really similar to um, the Christian Brothers University, which we just saw. We have 53, 47 female to male ratio and 78% of our students come from the state of Virginia and 22% of students come from out of state. And those out of state students come from 30 different states and 22 different nations. So we have a good diverse mix of students on campus. About 23% of our student body identifies as being racially diverse. We have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio an average class size of 16 students. And I think if you ask our students, what's your favorite thing about Randolph-Macon, a lot of them will say it's the relationships that they have with their professors. It's truly unique. The professors want to get to know you. They want to know where you come from, what your learning styles are, what your goals are, and they want to help you achieve your goals as well. We have a lot of opportunities for students to do research in their undergraduate, including a Shapiro Undergraduate Research Fellowship, um, where students are paid to do their own research over the summer. We have 50 plus majors, minors, and pre-professional programs, and this is growing each year. We have a new nursing major, an engineering major, um, so those are two of our most popular programs right now, along with business, psychology, pre-med. 35% of our students study abroad, which is pretty high above the national average, because we present students with a lot of opportunities to be able to study abroad, including a 414 academic calendar. So it's a normal calendar, four months of fall, four months of spring, like at most colleges, but we have a one month term in the middle, which always falls in the month of January, and we call it January term or J term for short. So students have three options on what they can do during January term. You can take one class intensively for the entire month. You can study abroad for the entire month, or you can do an internship. And you're not alone to find internships. Our Edge Career Center helps students find internships and jobs after they graduate. It was actually my favorite thing about Randolph-Macon and the reason I decided to go there as a student myself. They're ranked number 13 in the nation for career services. And they help students with all things from the moment that you step on campus your freshman year until you graduate your senior year. They make sure you have all the tools that you need to succeed. Everything from a cover letter and resume workshop to a financial literacy workshop, um, mock interviews, they got you covered. For student life, we have over 100 clubs and organizations and they, those range everywhere from your math club to your Harry Potter club and your knitting club. So lots of options. 
We also have 13 frater fraternities and sororities and 14 residence halls. We are a residential campus, which means that most students will live on campus all four years. In your senior year, you have a really nice senior apartment. And we also have 18 varsity sports teams, men's and women's. Um, we have a really big rivalry with an all-male school in Virginia, and um, we get really intense rivalry whenever we play them, so it's always a lot of fun. We have two forms of our application. The first one is on our website, and we are members of the Common App. Both applications are completely free, and we get the same information from both, so it's really up to you, whichever one you decide to do. Here are some of our deadlines down at the bottom. We do have early action and regular decision. Notice we do not have early decision, which is a binding contract. Um, early action is just you apply earlier and we let you know earlier. Some of the things that we look for in your application, your courses and your grades, so your transcript, a personal statement or an essay. And we really hope that you let yourself shine here. Letter of recommendation from someone who can speak to your academic ability all of your extracurricular involvement. We wanna to get to know you as best as possible. Um, if you're a transfer student, we require college transcripts and we are test optional. So you can submit your test scores, but you do not have to and your merit-based scholarship will not be affected either way. And then we also have an optional interview. For our merit-based scholarships, all students are considered for scholarships. There's no additional form or essay. And there are three um, main awards that you can get and over 95% of our families do receive um, that merit-based scholarship, and you'll be notified in your acceptance letter how much you'll be getting in merit-based aid. And then for need-based aid that comes from the FAFSA, and we have a FAFSA filer incentive. So each year that you fill out the FAFSA for Randolph-Macon, they will tack on an extra $1,000 to your financial aid pack. Ways to connect with our admissions office. We definitely encourage you to connect with the admissions counselors. I would be your admissions counselor since I work with all students from the Southern region, um, but all of us are more than happy to answer your questions. We, um, we are offering information sessions, open houses, special events, college fairs like this one, all virtually, and we are offering in-person tours, um, but also follow us on social media because we're always posting student takeovers and updates of what's going on on campus. And here is some of my information, which I will pop in the chat, but feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have any more questions or you want to learn more about Randolph-Macon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faith. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions for a Randolph-Macon College, please put it down in the Q&A down at the bottom. And also check out the chat. You know, you may have some universities putting some information down at the chat. And Lafayette College is on uh, next. Thank you all so much. Um, all right, good evening. My name's Tony Pace. I'm a Southeastern Regional Director, which means I'm the guy who does all the reading of your file and, and get to be your advocate and your champion, should you decide to explore an application to Lafayette. Uh, I can't talk about Lafayette without talking about our namesake. The Marquis de Lafayette, um, for whom we are named, is a little bit of our history because he came from France at the age of 19. I'm not sure who's in the room, so um, you, you, not much older than you, two years, three years older than you guys are, but at the age of 19, left his home in France to come to the continental then U.S., not even, um, to join a revolution that had nothing to do with France because it was the right thing to do. And because he was a person who thought right was better than popular. And that very much sort of influences who we are and, and, and how we engage students today. Um, we are a campus of 2,500 undergraduate students only. Uh, I think the undergraduate focus is important because it means that all of the resources that is Lafayette is specifically focused on you and not maintaining a medical school or a business school or a hospital facility. Um, we, we, and I won't give you all the details of where our students come from because that's all on the slide that you can see there, but I want to draw your attention to sort of the applied liberal arts and four academic divisions. Uh, we are an applied liberal arts college with four divisions of humanities, natural sciences, social sciences, and engineering. And the engineering is especially important as you look at us within the confines of a liberal arts college because 25% of our students study engineering. And that's important because engineering at Lafayette is very much influenced by the liberal arts broad understanding, questioning why. 
Uh, our director of engineering division uh, sums up how engineering differs at Lafayette with the photograph. And the photograph is uh, two kids sitting in a dugout um, playing baseball. The first kid's running to the field. The second kid has blades for legs. And he says, that's what Lafayette engineers do. They don't, they look at problem solving as a way of helping to improve human life. And so that means it's a little bit of a different approach. The, the trans, you know, the trans, let's transpose that and then our, our liberal arts students are very much influenced by the STEM, the engineering, the technical and applied approaches uh, to the tune that 70% of them will do some research before they graduate. Uh, there's an Excel Scholar program where students can be paid to do research. And if it extends over the summer, then they actually get housing pay as well as being paid while they're doing that research. Uh, we're one of the smallest schools in the country that offers Division I varsity sports program, NCAA Division I. Um, we have 23 varsity sport programs. We participate in the Patriot League. And I'm proud to say that we have the longest standing continually played football game in the country. If you do a quick Google search and you look for the rivalry, one of the things that's going to pop up is the Lafayette Lehigh football game. I'll leave it at that. Um, we're an engaged campus with more than 200 clubs and activities that range from um, 23 varsity, uh, I'm sorry, not 23, but 50 club and intramural sports programs, um, 24 arts and community clubs. Someone mentioned the Harry Potter Club. Yes, there's a Critics team on the campus as well, but we're also a connected campus because we, we are connected to the community in which we live, to the tune that last year uh, that we were on campus fully pre-COVID, we did about 20,000 hours between our students, our faculty, and our staff of community service in the city of Easton. The city of Easton, that's where we're located. Um, we are about an hour and a half out of Manhattan. We're about an hour and a half out of Center City, Philadelphia, uh, in the town of Easton. That's a photo, a shot of downtown Easton um, in the Lehigh Valley. We are, the, the town is about 30,000 people, but if you add the rest of the Lehigh Valley, it's third, only second you know, behind Pittsburgh and Philadelphia in terms of populations within. That street that slices the photograph, that gives you a shot of downtown. But at the top of that hill, you see rooftops. That's Lafayette College. And so we're in the city of Easton, but not really. We're 98% residential, on-campus housing forever and a day. Um, but we are a place where uh, we're in what the photo says, we're in the middle of everything. I say we're on the edge of everything because we're about 20 minutes from the Appalachian Trail. So if you're a hiker, a biker, uh, camping, trail running, you wanna do that. We're about 20 minutes from uh, the Poconos Mountains. So if you wanna ski and get outdoors. Now, we're also at the, at the base of our campus uh, are two rivers, the Delaware Valley River and the Lehigh River. Um, we've got access to a little bit of everything. And so we like to say that our students are encouraged to seek and, and, and try and be bigger be parts of something that's bigger than themselves. Um, the, the Marquis had a rally cry of Cur Nun, and Cur Nun is Latin for why not. And so there's a why not mentality about everything that we have our students do, be it academic, be it doing research, be it studying abroad, of which about half of our students study abroad at least once during their time on campus. Um, I will pause there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tony from Lafayette College. If you have any questions for Tony, please put it down in the Q&A section down at the bottom. Next, we have Florida Institute of Technology. Bob, you are on. Well, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Bob Rowe. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Undergraduate Admissions here at the university. And of all the colleges that are here tonight, we are the warmest. Uh, it was a brisk day of 72 degrees outside. Uh, I know my Florida people, that's not impressive, but if you're from Virginia right now, it probably is. Um, we're located on the central east coast of Florida. We are about, um, about a half hour, 45 minutes south of the Space Center. We're in the heart of the Space Coast, about an hour from Orlando. Uh, we have about 3,500 undergraduates and about 1,500 graduate students. 
from all 50 states and over 100 different countries, freshmen and sophomores are required to live on campus. Uh, oh, yes, and freshmen can have cars. Yes, we have parking, and we're three and a half miles from the beach. So we'll get the important questions knocked out of the way. Uh, our admissions process is rolling. What that basically means is we process applications on an ongoing basis. If you're a junior, you can use our application or the Common App. Uh, our app goes live on uh, middle of June, and our uh, Common App for everybody pretty much goes live October 1st. So it gives you an idea of when you can start putting your application in. If you're a senior and you're still thinking of applying, we are still accepting applications. Um, uh, right now, we have four different academic divisions here on campus. We have the College of Eng Engineering and Science, which makes up about 70% of our student population. We have the College of Psychology and Liberal Arts, uh, and that makes up about 10%. We have a College of Business, uh, and we also have a College of Aeronautics, where we train students to not only get a degree, but learn how to become professional pilots. Uh, we have alumni flying with all the major airlines right now. And uh, one of my former work studies is taking off and landing F-18s on aircraft carriers. Not a bad job for a pilot. Um, our probably our three most popular majors are aerospace engineering. Uh, we do a lot of rocket launches, very hands-on. We have an engineering design center. Students get to put their engineering projects together there. The second one is uh, mechanical engineering and mechanical engineering has uh, a lot of things geared towards like robotics. We do a lot, a lot of work in robotics. My three favorite student robots are we had one that solved the Rubik's cube in 20 moves or less. We had another one that did origami, made little kitty cats and sailboats. That was kind of cute. But my favorite robot was the checkers robot. And the professor asked the students, well, what if I try and cheat? And our students all laughed at him and said, go ahead. So he stole some of the robot's chips, put some of his chips on, hit the play button. In a very stern female voice, the robot said, you've made an illegal move, stop trying to cheat. Afterwards, when it beat him, it played another one, bites the dust and took a bow. They all got A's because our professor likes robots that taunt. How does that help you in the working world? Well, one of our students that was in that program, her first job out of school was training astronauts how to repair and operate the robotic arm on the shuttle. Because if something breaks in space, you can't call AAA. So, our students very much get into their uh, programs right away. We are, what I mean by that, a direct admit program. So when you're admitted to Florida Tech, you are admitted directly into your major. So day one, if you're an engineer, you're taking engineering classes. If you're a marine biologist, we'll have you standing at three feet of muck somewhere. If you are an aeronautics student, we will have you flying the first week you are here. Uh, you don't wait two years to find out what your major is going to be. You find out in about two weeks if you like the major you're in. If you don't, you can move on to something else. So I think that's one of our big points. Right now, 75% of our students on average graduate from here with either an internship or co-op experience. Uh, our local area lends themselves to that. Uh, it's not only NASA and SpaceX, it's also Northrop Grumman, Harris Corporation, uh, Collins Aerospace, General Electric. We have the largest percentage of our alumni living anywhere in the country is living right here in Ballard County, Florida, because we have a lot of students from the Northeast. They come down and after four years of living in paradise, they don't wanna go back to driving the Garden State Parkway or I-95. They like living in Florida. So you can stay here if you want to, uh, but we have students working in Seattle right now for, for Microsoft, Boeing. Uh, my daughter graduated from here with her computer science degree. She's currently working for Department of Defense up in DC. Uh, so our students end up going all over the country. We have alumni working at all sorts of places right now. That's a big plus. Our career center does two big uh, career fairs a year, kind of like job fairs, except it's employers. We have a lot of graduate level research that our undergraduates get involved with. They graduate not only with degrees and internships and job opportunities, but they also can be published and know how to write grant proposals. A lot of our students get into great graduate schools because of that. And probably the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is we have some of the highest starting salaries of any college in the state of Florida and the highest starting or mid-career salary, uh, we're talking about 20 years out uh, after you graduate of any college in the state of Florida. So the opportunities are boundless here. Uh, we're not a commuter school. Everybody pretty much stays here on the weekends. Uh, just because everybody's kind of from somewhere else. Uh, outside activities real quick. 
My two favorite outside clubs are the Society for Science Fiction and Fantasy. Their motto is reality is a crutch for those who can't handle science fiction. And of course, the ever popular Zombies versus Humans Club. If you want to hear more about that, I can chat with you in the chat. But uh, I hope you're having a great night and please uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks. Thank you so much, Bob. If you have any questions for Bob down at the Q&A, that is where you would ask it. And that is where Bob will check uh, to make sure he answers any question about Florida Institute of Technology. Up next, we have Southern Illinois University. Hey, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Quigley. I'm an admissions counselor here at Southern Illinois University um, in Carbondale. So Carbondale is located at the very southern tip of Illinois, um, not anywhere close to Chicago. We're about five hours away from Chicago, uh, about three hours away from Memphis. So we're closer to Memphis than we are uh, Chicago. Uh, so we are a research institution. We're among the top five of all higher education research institu institutions in the United States. Uh, what does that mean? That all our faculty is, all our tenured faculty is doing some sort of research. Um, we've done vaccine research here at SIU and tons of other research. Um, one thing that is really cool about us is we allow freshmen to start doing research their first year here. Um, they get in the labs, they help professors. Um, a lot of colleges wait until you're in grad school or your senior year to even get into doing some of that research. We have about 10,000 undergraduate students um, from all 100 different countries all over the United States. Uh, even though we have a lot of students, our class sizes are relatively small. Um, the average is about 13 to one when we have over 200 different programs offered. Some of our popular ones are aviation. So um, if you wanna learn how to fly planes, you can come here and do that. Uh, automotive tech is a popular one. We have business school, pre-med, pre-law, all that sort of stuff. So um, it's a good place to get whatever major you have or you're interested in, we most likely will have it. Uh, one cool thing about our university housing is this last semester, all students got their own dorm room. Um, so they didn't have to have a roommate. Uh, it was suite style. So they shared the bathroom with only one other room. Um, and then each person, uh, they just divide it up however they want. Uh, and we have the biggest dorm rooms in the state of Illinois. Um, so our dorm rooms are very impressive. Uh, we have living learning communities. And what a living learning community is, is your entire floor will be uh, people in your same major. So you can go to class with them, study with them. Um, for example, our automotive tech, they have like car engines on the floor so they can work on that right in their, by their dorm rooms uh, without going all the way uh, to the labs and stuff like that. And we have living learning communities for a tons of different majors. Um, so that's kind of how we do our housing. We are a division one uh, school. So we have about 15 uh, NCAA division sports. Uh, our newest sport is women's soccer. We just added that. Uh, last year was our probation year. So this coming year will be um, their first year playing competitively, part of the Missouri Valley Conference. And uh, our mas mascot is the Saluki, which is an Egyptian hunting dog. Uh, we have over 300 registered student organizations, uh, ranging from academic, religious, um, Greek life, we have that. We have a Quidditch team, uh, if you wanna get involved in playing that. Now, there's tons of different stuff to do. Um, if we don't have the one thing that you wanna do, we encourage you to start it because we want all our students to be involved uh, while they're here at SIU. So we like to invest in our students. Uh, the thing that brought me to SIU is that we offer in-state tuition for all domestic students. So it doesn't matter what state you're from, you will get in-state tuition. You can be from Georgia, Tennessee, Arkansas, wherever you're from, you will still get in-state tuition. Um, and that tuition locks in for four years. So you'll pay the same rate that you paid your senior year as you did your freshman year. 90% of all of our students receive some sort of financial aid. Um, we give away over $10 million in scholarships. So there's we like to give, we like to help our students as much as we can. Um, if you are a senior this year, we are still accepting applications. Um, so get on that as soon as possible. Otherwise for the next, for 2022, that should be opening up in the summertime. This is our total estimated budget. Um, this is for 2020. It's, it's looking like it'll be the same for 2021 as well. So tuition is about 10,000 and we have about $5,000 worth of fees and then room and board is about another 10,000 for a total of 25,000. Um, for the whole year. Now, part of the fees is health insurance. So if you are on your parents' health insurance, uh, you can take about $2,000 off the fees. Um, otherwise, we will provide health insurance for you. It's, it's covered in the student fees. 
So this is kind of how we do our freshman uh, scholarship opportunities. So as long as you have at least a 275 GPA, you will get a, a academic scholarship from us. We give these to every student that qualifies for it um, all the way up until our 3.0 and higher, you can compete for our Chancellor Scholarship, which is a full ride, covers all the fees, tuition, room and board, and everything. So there is an interview process for that. Um, if you are interested in that, it, we don't look, we are, we are test optional. We don't require test scores at all. We purely just look at GPA. If you are at a, like a 3.5 GPA and you did do well in the ACT or SAT, you can send that in. It's totally up to you and that can help bump you up to the next level of scholarships. Um, but that's kind of how we do our scholarships. So um, there's a $40 application fee. We are not part of the Common App. You have to go to our website to apply. Um, but all we need is your official transcripts and then your test scores if you want to. Um, the application is very easy. There's no essay or anything like that. It takes about 10, 15 minutes at the most to get to uh, finish your application. And then if you want to learn more, follow us on our social media. Um, we're on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, so that's where you can uh, find out more information about us or hit me up in the chat and I'll be here to help you answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. Again, if you have any questions for Tom in Southern Illinois University, please go down to the Q&A down at the bottom to ask them. Next, last but not least, we have University of Missouri. Okay, hi everyone. Hopefully not least, definitely last in the group. <laughs> so thank you for, for hanging in there. Um, so my name is Jennifer Shaughnessy and I am based in Atlanta, Georgia. I work with all students in the Southeast. So, so happy to, to have you guys joining us today. So um, if you're not familiar with University of Missouri, we are also known as Mizzou. Um, so sorry about that. There we go. So University of Missouri, also known as Mizzou, um, we are a large public um, university located in Columbia, Missouri. So I do have a map on the next slide. So if you're not as familiar with locations, we can point that out too. But with large public university, what that means for us is we are a campus of just over 30,000 students. About 23,000 of that population is undergrad. And then we do have a very strong um, graduate population on our campus as well. We are one of very few schools in the US to have a vet school, med school, and law school on our campus. Campus. So that's very much a strong part of our graduate school population. We do see students coming to us from all over the state of Missouri, but on top of that, we see students from every state in the US and over 120 countries as well. We are very proud to be both a land grant and AAU institution. Essentially what that means as a land grant school means that we are the primary school for the, for the state of Missouri and the focus is on providing top level education and also at an affordable cost. And then as an AAU institution, what that means is we are recognized as one of the top research institutions in the country as well. So we love that combination for our students. So that map that I promised, just to give you a bit of a visual on our location, again, we are Columbia. Um, you can see right where that paw print is. We are almost exactly in between the cities of St. Louis and Kansas City. Columbia itself is very much its own entity. Um, about 120,000 people within Columbia. We are fortunate to consistently be on list um, of top places to live as far as Columbia itself, and then uh, one of the top college towns in the country too. So I love that balance for our students. Downtown Columbia is right next to our campus. So um, just um, across the street from the north end of our campus, you will have access to um, all of our favorite shops and restaurants and hangouts for students. So lots to do on campus, but then off campus as well, easy access to, to all of those favorite hangouts. 
as far as on campus, then we do offer over 300 degree programs. So a lot of variety for our students. Some of our um, most popular majors for our applicants every year will be journalism. Um, we are very proud to be the very first school of journalism in the world and consistently top ranked as well. So journalism communications is always a popular area of study for our students. Some of our other most popular and largest majors will be business, engineering, anything in the healthcare professions. Um, we are also very proud to have our own MU healthcare system with hospitals and clinics right on our campus. Um, so very much a part of the campus community. Over 600 clubs and organizations, about anything uh, that you can think of to join, of course, um, and then Division I sports on campus as well. Hands-on learning is very important to us at Mizzou, and um, one of the most popular um, or most famous examples of this will be that bottom right picture, KOMU TV. We are the only college campus in the country to have our own NBC affiliate studios as part of our campus. So when we talk about hands-on learning, a lot of ways to do that. Um, students get involved day one on campus. Application process, we do have our own application and we are members of the common application. Um, so for this year, students had a choice to apply with test scores or without. Either way, we do need, of course, that official application, your official high school transcript for students applying with test scores, sending in those test scores. And then you'll see on this slide, if students were applying test optional, um, students could send in a resume and a personal statement in lieu of those test scores. I will say for juniors and younger, we are still in the process of deciding what that, that best um, application process is next year for students. So we will keep students informed as we make those decisions moving forward. If we've learned anything this past year, it's about going with the flow, right? So we'll make sure we do that and make decisions that are best for our students. So we do have both automatic and competitive scholarships. Automatic scholarships, you apply and you are automatically considered for those. Then we do have competitive scholarships that students need to apply for each year by December 1st. I do want to make sure I point out our very unique residency program in the state of Missouri. Uh, we are one of only two um, universities that offers a residency program like this in the US. Um, essentially, these five bullet points, you live in Missouri for 12 consecutive months. What most of my out-of-state students will do is live on campus their freshman year, stay in the state of Missouri that summer after their freshman year, um, and then they are taking the important steps towards gaining residency. D1 Athletics, part of the SEC, can visit on campus. Um, we, do, we are open for in-person. We also have virtual visits and contact me anytime and I'm happy to help out with questions. Thank you guys so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Jennifer. Jennifer is from University of Missouri, otherwise known as Mizzou. So please, if you have any questions, put it down in the Q&A down at the bottom. We do have a few minutes, so I did want to um, make sure that we can get kind of a, a fun little question here to get answered. Um, so we're gonna go in presentation order with Christian Brothers University going first. So if you could give any advice to someone going through the college search process, what kind of advice would you give? Uh, let's keep it to one at this point. Yeah, great question. And on a typical year, I would say definitely go visit the campus. But of course, with this pandemic going on, it's kind of hard to do that safely. And a lot of institutions aren't providing that opportunity right now. So I would say the next biggest piece of advice I would give is if you have an opportunity, try to meet the faculty members in the majors that you're looking for, whether that's um, via Zoom or WebEx. Do your best to have a conversation with the people that you'll be spending the next four years with because in the admissions office you know we we work with you a lot while y'all are in high school and once you get there you spend the most of your time with the faculty members so definitely if you have the opportunity go to an academic showcase academic open houses at whatever institution you're thinking of and take that opportunity to meet your future professors thank you so much randolph macon what advice would you give 
I would just want to echo everything that Maria said. I would have said the same thing. Another piece of advice I would give is to really sit down and think about what factors you want to have in a college, the location, the size, the majors that you're interested in, so you can narrow down that list because there's over 3,000 colleges in America. So be sure to narrow down a list of what the main factors that are important to you and find that in a college. Awesome advice to both of you. Lafayette College, you are next. I would say be, because we're, we use what, what's called demonstrated interest as a part of our application review, um, while you can't physically get on the campus, make sure that you're taking advantage of virtual opportunities um, because we've all had to pivot and offer virtual information sessions, virtual tours, virtual faculty sessions so that you have a chance to really do a deeper dive um, that you wouldn't get an opportunity to do. But uh, demonstrated interest is another part of the evaluation process for some campuses. So make sure that you're engaging where you can, even if you can't physically get to the campus. Fantastic advice. Thank you so much. Florida Institute of Technology, what advice would you give? Um, a lot of your college search is going to be based on the major you're looking for. So I'm going to take a different tact here and talk about um, um, how do you choose a major? Because that's going to dictate a lot of the colleges you're going to go to or who you're going to eliminate from your search list. So I have two suggestions. Uh, you know, build your major around something that you already like, that you have a passion for. Uh, for example, if you like robotics, mechanical engineering might be great for you. Uh, that would probably be the, the biggest thing. Don't go into a major just because your parents tell you you can be able to, you'll be able to make a lot of money and you won't have to live at home. That is not a good reason to select a major. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a book out there that pretty much describes this and it's called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. So be passionate about what you're going to do because if you're passionate, you're gonna perform better in the classroom and better in the working world. So find out what careers match up with your passions would be and what majors match up with those careers. Fantastic. And we can get both of the last two in if they are very, very quick. Southern Illinois University. Hi, uh, my suggestion would be just do your research as much as you can. Uh, I know with COVID a lot, it's hard to do that, but check out all these colleges, social media, um, check out Facebook, go to YouTube, watch their virtual visits, uh, even check out Reddit where everyone can be an anonymous and then uh, you can see what everyone's saying about the university. That'd be my suggestion. Thank you. Jennifer? I'll just wrap up by saying focus on what you can control and try to let go of the things you can't control. If you if you put that energy into those things that are out of your control, uh, it's going to be a rough process. So make it smoother by focusing on what on what you can control in the process. Awesome advice from University of Missouri, as well as our other institutions. So thank you all so much for that. Um, at this point in time, I did uh, want to just thank you all so, so much uh, for being here, for uh, being at this virtual college fair. You got to learn a lot about different institutions, but like they said, please make sure to double check their websites, their social media, and enjoy some of the information they uh, shared in the chat or answered some of your questions. So again, thank you for joining. Once you uh, exit out, we have a quick four question survey. So please answer those questions for us to give us some feedback. There are more sessions tonight, so please sign up for more sessions. Uh, also, a recording, again, will be available about a week out from this session today. But once again, thank you all so much and have a great night.